I'm making a documentary, so I've got some shots from it that I want to show you guys how to do, starting off with this time lapse. This video is brought to you by Amazing Music Tracks. Licensed hundreds of royalty-free tracks for your videos, films, and more, including the music in this video. Check the description for a link and a 10% off discount. So the first thing you need to shoot a highway time-lapse is a good vantage point. Now you could be an idiot and get a really tall tripod and then run through traffic to the median to set it up, but that's a really good way to get yourself killed or arrested, so don't do that. The best thing to do is to find a pedestrian overpass going over the highway. If you don't know of any, Google Maps is a good place to look around. Once you've found a spot, you'll want to scout it out. Bring your camera and a few lenses to try different focal lengths and settings to see what works best for your location based on the design of the overpass and the path of the highway. In my case, I was fortunate to have a pretty long stretch of straight highway, but the overpass had a really tall chain link fence I would have to shoot through. I used a Joby Gorilla Pod so I could position the camera right up against the chain links and shoot through them. I shot my test footage with my 12-40mm at 40mm. That ended up not being long enough as the lengths of the fence I was shooting through were still visible in the time lapse. So for the actual shoot I switched to a 60mm which worked perfectly. It was a bit long and cut off a lot of the highway, but fortunately the stretch was long enough that I still got a good shot. As for lighting, you generally want it fairly dark outside because the thing that makes a time lapse like this interesting is the headlights and the taillights of the cars driving by. In my case, I started shooting right before official sunset time, which is something you can easily check with Google Maps or an app like Photographer's Ephemeris. That meant that it was dark enough that cars had their lights on, but light enough that the car lights weren't the only thing you could see. I also used Photographer's Ephemeris to ensure that the sun was behind me, so the sky behind the highway was lit up blue rather than orange and red from the sun. Shooting as the sun was going down did mean that the environment got visibly darker as the time lapse progressed, so if you don't want that, you may choose to shoot completely at night. Now, if you do shoot late at night, you will want to find a highway that's well lit from either street lights or building lights. In my case, the highway wasn't well lit, so I didn't have that option. Exposure and timings were mostly straightforward. I set the camera to take one photo every second, which for a half hour time lapse gives me a bit over a minute of footage at 24 FPS in the final clip. It's also fast enough that you'll actually be able to see the motion of the cars relatively easily. My ISO was set fairly low to avoid excessive noise, and my aperture was set wide open at f2.8. The reason I kept the aperture wide open is not only to ensure that I got enough light, but also to narrow the depth of field so that if any of the chain links were over the image, they would be so far out of focus that you couldn't see them. The entire roadway was far enough away that it would be entirely in focus even at f2.8. I also set my shutter speed fairly slow at half a second. The reason I did that is to ensure I got a lot of motion blur on the moving vehicles. If I set the shutter speed at something more typical for video like 1 30th or 1 60th of a second, there would be very little motion blur on the cars, making the time lapse look choppy. The cars would appear to be hopping around rather than actually moving. The long shutter speed gave each car plenty of motion blur to smooth everything out and make it look more polished. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hopefully that gave you a good description of how you can shoot a highway time lapse. I think time lapses like this are really cool and they're one of the best ways that you can use a time lapse. Uh, in your film or your project or whatever you're shooting or even just have a time lapse like this that stands on its own. They're very cool. I love doing them a lot. Um, so hopefully again this helped you with that. Um, so if so, hit the like button. If not, feel free to hit the dislike button. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. Also, as I mentioned, I am working on a documentary project, if you didn't already know that. Uh, the project is called The Blue Mound. As you can see, uh, not very well, but I've got part of it playing on the monitor right there. Uh, but I'm currently working on that, 
So if you're interested in that, you want to see more about that, you can follow uh, Tall Guy Films on Twitter or Facebook. And you can also follow The Blue Mound, which is the name of the documentary, on Facebook. So if you go to facebook.com slash The Blue Mound, you can check out that documentary. Um, and you can follow it and you can see some of the other stuff I'm doing. And I'll be posting other videos like this about some of the stuff I'm doing. Uh, but if you want to keep up to date on that and see that when it comes out, definitely go check that out on social media. Uh, but anyway, that is it for this video. So um, again, like, dislike, comment. Uh, and also, if you want to see more videos like this, including, again, more updates on my upcoming documentary, hit that subscribe button.